Hi, my name is Malik, Training Manager for Interconnect Wiring Where Connections Matter. Today we're going to be learning about wafer connectors and how they are different from circular connectors. On an F16 wiring harness, you'll sometimes see both circular connectors and wafer connectors. Both connectors, of course, have their different benefits. Circular connectors are more common throughout the aerospace industry, and their circular shape allows them to distribute the g-force that is put on them while in flight. Wafer connectors are selected for the F16 because they are compact and easy to stack. You'll often find them near panels where they can be stacked near one another with sheet metal around them to disperse the g-forces that impact them. However, the assembly process for a wafer connector is different than a circular connector. Since we usually show circular connectors, today we'll be focusing on the wafer connectors. The way we terminate the wafer connector is different, and instead of crimping the wire on the end of the wafer connector, they are stripped and then soldered to the wafer connector using pinkies. It takes specialized tools to terminate a wafer connector, so at Interconnect we use what is called a wafer stand and a wafer clip. This allows us to terminate the wafer in a much more efficient manner than would be normally possible. So since we're in the training room, we have a partially built wiring harness that will now showcase how to finish these last two wires on a wafer. So these are already stripped and prepared. And I would do this by placing the pinky right on the wire, letting it slide down. And then now I'm gonna position the wire exactly on the pin that it needs to go on and very gently slide up pinky. I'm now going to turn my heat gun on and let that get to temperature and get a good grip on what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to aim my heat gun directly at the solder ring that is inside this solder sleeve. At Interconnect we call these pinkies because there's that pink wax on the bottom, but there's also the yellow wax as well. So we're going to aim this at it for about 15 to maybe even a minute and it will slowly begin to melt. You want to verify that all the solder will flow very evenly because if it doesn't, you run the risk of having cold solder. Another requirement is the wire to be centered on the pin, but once those two things are maintained, you can remove the heat and allow the solder to cool. You want to hold steady because the solder isn't yet hardened, and if you move, you could lose its placement. And now that it's cool, you can place everything down. So now that we've completed two wafers, an A and a B side, we can put it in this golden shell over here. We'll do that by very carefully placing in the wafers until we hear a small click. So once they're placed inside of this golden shell, this is exactly what it looks like. And that is how you assemble a wafer. Thank you so much for watching. We are Interconnect Wiring, where connections matter. Make sure to visit our website for more vlogs, blogs, and updates.